The words, good work, are always good for an employee to hear. Of course, to receive that praise, you first have to be an employee, which for one group of talented but underrated people has often been a challenge. Until now, Lee Cowan reports our cover story. 27-year-old Christopher Polly thought he had it all figured out when it came to looking for a job. So all of these are all the people you sent resumes to? Yes. Whoa. He had a detailed spreadsheet of each and every position he applied for. How many? At least 600. Wow. But despite his degree in computer science from California Polytechnic State University, he went two years with barely a nibble. Were you getting pretty discouraged? Oh my gosh, my morale really started to drop towards the end. In fact, there were days where I would either hardly fill out any applications at all or just simply not apply to anything. He knew he had the smarts for most jobs. He was a former spelling bee champ, after all. But Christopher struggles with social and communication skills because he's also autistic. <laughs> While precise numbers are hard to come by, by some estimates, at least 80% of adults with autism are unemployed even though their IQs were often well above average. This is called at night in dreams. Sometimes their job skills can present themselves in unique ways. For Christopher, it's video games. His ability to recognize patterns and his acute attention to detail, both hallmarks of autism, make this look pretty easy. And they are the same skills he was hoping would impress prospective employers in the computer programming world. But he always had to get past that interview, which was a challenge at best. Was there any in any of those interviews a time where you just wanted to tell somebody, look, I know my social skills maybe aren't quite what you expect, but I, I know I can do this job and I know I can do a really good job if you give me a chance? Yes. But you never said that to anybody? Most of the time, no. Because why? I, I just wasn't comfortable, because it, make, it makes me come across as desperate. At Microsoft, however, there was no need to hide his autism. They were looking for it. It's a talent pool that really hasn't been tapped. Jenny LaFleury is the chief accessibility officer. There really is and was a lot of data on the table that said to us that we were missing out. We were missing out on an opportunity to bring talent in with autism. So in a way, it sounds like this was almost a business imperative. Heck yeah. People with disabilities are a strength and a force of nature in this company, myself included. LaFleury, who is profoundly deaf, communicates by reading lips and working with an interpreter. She helped create a hiring program for Microsoft in 2015 outside Seattle, designed to better identify candidates with autistic talents. So I'm going to put 18 minutes on the clock. Instead of the traditional job interview, focusing so heavily on social skills. That's what we want for the base. The company has replaced it with a vetting process that lasts for weeks and team building exercises, like this demonstration called the Marshmallow Challenge. All right, is that marshmallow going to fit on top of this thing somehow? Being able to watch a candidate in that environment as yeah. opposed to sitting across the table interviewing them right. makes all the difference in the world. Every difference. Every day in any company, in any role, you're going to be asked to work with someone else right. to figure out a problem or a challenge. And yet in that or a scenario, project. They're not as self-conscious that they're being observed for a job. They're just doing a task. It's marshmallows. Mm -hmm. After Christopher went through a similar unconventional interview process back in 2016, Microsoft quickly hired him as a software engineer. I like it. Well done. His manager, Brent Truell, says he was immediately impressed by Christopher's out-of-the-box thinking. When we are faced with really complicated problems, the solutions to those aren't always simple. And Christopher always kind of brings new insights and having that creative mind. He always brings something new to the team, which is really exciting. Which is exactly why you, why you hired him, right? That's what you're looking for, isn't right. it? It's an idea that's catching on. Last April, 50 big-name companies, including J.P. Morgan, Ford, and Ernst & Young, came together for a summit on how to bring more autistic adults into the workforce. We know at SAP that innovation really happens at the edges. It was hosted at the Silicon Valley campus of German software maker SAP. SAP was one of the first large companies to reach out to the autistic community. It started its Autism at Work program almost five years ago. And since then, it's hired 128 people on the spectrum, with the goal of hiring more than 600. 
I have been in this industry for close to 30 years, and I can tell you it's probably the single most rewarding program that I have uh, been involved with. Jose Velasco heads the program. The biggest surprise for him, he says, has been the variety of candidates applying. Very quickly, we started getting resumes from people that had degrees in history, in literature, in graphic design, attorneys, a whole wide the array whole of, gamut of, of, of jobs. So really, you went into this thinking that, that people with autism would be good at certain jobs. Yes. And what you ended up discovering is they're good at all jobs. They are good at just about every role. And they're expected to perform in those roles just like anyone else. And everybody speaks English. Mike Sabrowski, for example, was hired three years ago and works in cybersecurity in SAP's office outside Philadelphia. When we were visiting, Jose was helping Mike get ready for a long stint at the company World Headquarters in Germany. If you would have told me six years ago that we would have an employee who is openly autistic in the company, uh, going on a business trip to Germany for, for a month, I would have, have not believed you. I'm still looking through the documentation. Okay. Almost everyone has been a surprise, he says. He points to 26-year-old Gloria Mendoza. You should see some of the videos I had when I was a child. I was not very socially skilled with the other kids, not showing interest with other people, displaying some of the challenging behaviors that a child in the autism spectrum would have. When she was very young, I used to worry so much because I never thought she would overcome all what she has done. So it was like a very dark cloud. Her parents, Rosaria and Enrique Mendoza, helped get Gloria years of speech and occupational therapies, as well as access to top doctors. Gloria made huge strides in her childhood, but her parents were still concerned about how autism might affect her future. We worry about uh, her adult life. Well, first of all, could she make it through high school? Then once she thought that, you know, can she make it through college? Can she be independent? She made it through both high school and college. In fact, she got two degrees from Gettysburg College in Pennsylvania. One in music. She has a beautiful singing voice. And another in computer science. And yet, a year after graduating and hundreds of resumes later, she still couldn't find a job until she applied to SAP. Probably the best part about working here is that I can use the skills which I have studied whilst being among people that understand who I am and how I'm different from everybody else. SAP put Gloria through five weeks of training, which included working on her social skills. Hey, George. Hi, Gloria. How's it going? She's now in something called Digital Business Services. Now, are there any more further questions or incidents you want me to add? Where she deals directly with customers. What's the one dream you really want to come true? Probably that I can be really up there at my department, earning a lot of money and still keeping the friends that I have. Oh, I'm actually still alive! <laughs> I can't see a thing. Her new friends are mostly co-workers in the autism program, and they try to get together regularly. This was game night. And that CBS is how you be play Smash Brothers. <laughs> I never really had that many friends when I was younger, and having this wide variety of friends that understands me really makes all the difference for me. How so? Because I can express myself in ways that people won't look at me weird. And it turns out that a lot of people have common interests as I do. SAP boasts a retention rate of about 90% for their autistic employees. Part of that may be due to the fact that they're not just set adrift in the workplace all alone. Good, how was game night? Fun. Each participant in the program is assigned a mentor from within the company, sort of like an on-site guardian angel. So do you feel pretty comfortable and good to go? So far. Gabby Robertson Cauley, who has a cousin on the spectrum, volunteered to work with Gloria. I think it's, it's just the, the rewards of getting to be friends with, with these colleagues who have autism. It's not something you get in your typical corporate day-to-day -day experience. Hey, Chris. Microsoft also has mentors. Ready to go get lunch? Yeah. Good. Melanie Carmesino, who works with Christopher, has a personal connection as well. She has a son who's autistic. What have you taken away from this whole experience personally? Um, hope. Um, 
I think that this program gives hope to the autism community. It gives hope to parents like me. And it gives hope to people like my son that a company can and, sorry, and will look past their differences and see their gifts and, and let them contribute to society just like everybody else. This is it. This is my floor. Christopher is now independent, living on his own in a high-rise apartment, something he's always wanted. I don't want to ask how much you're, you're making, but you're, you're doing pretty good, it sounds like, yeah? Yes. Did you ever imagine you'd be making this much money? No, I never <laughs> did. Honestly, I would have been, I would have been perfectly happy with like half the, half the money I'm making now. He bought a car and drives himself to work. And for the first time, he says, looks forward to arriving at a place where he's accepted for who he is. Kind of shuffle the deck. He knows there are still challenges ahead, but given a chance to prove his worth, says Christopher, has given him an optimism he never had. If other kids or young adults or adults with autism are watching this, what do you, what's your message to them? Don't give up and make sure to always aim high. Don't aim in the middle. Um, you know, shoot for the stars every time, because you never know what might happen. 